morning. Good morning. Fire away. Ollie, when you have as many new faces as you do, what's the challenge of you know incorporating them, building chemistry, building familiarity with those guys? Uh, it's extremely important. It's what we spent a little bit of the off season doing, and um, it was really good to get them all in one room and uh, start to talk through uh, process and culture and uh, what it looks like to come together. But uh, we were very specific, and I know we've talked about it enough of the names that we went out and got, and um, they're here for a reason. And um, to say that we're excited about it is a is an understatement. Oh, you have a lot of guys who want to be here. You have Lance Lynn back. You have Matt Carpenter back. Guys who say they want to be Cardinals. What does that do for the energy right now going to spring? Yeah, it's important when guys actually want to play here. And uh, when you look at Sonny, he wanted to be here. Gibby wanted to play here. Lance wanted to play here. Carp wanted to come back. It, when you go down that list, they're excited to be a Cardinal. Um, there's a lot of things when you enter free agency that you end up chasing. These guys wanted to make sure that they were here. We wanted to make sure they were here, and I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Howie, how do you see that play out in a clubhouse, like that that idea that they wanted to be here and that they are here? I mean, how does that, I guess, impact the room? Um, it, it's helpful uh, this offseason, just being able to jump on calls with them individually and then get them all on one call and, and kind of talk through some things. It's uh, it's helpful when you have a ton of players that want to be here and be in St. Louis and be Cardinals and uh, know what we stand for and, and get back to winning baseball after after last year. So uh, the conversations that we've had have been awesome. Hey, Ollie, with today being the benchmark of the first day pitchers and catchers can officially go out, starting the season, if you will, can you talk to describe why you're excited and think this team can crack the postseason and then even make hay in the postseason. Yeah, from a skill standpoint, I think we have what it takes. Um, but today's day one of just attention to detail through the roof. Uh, when you talk about the fundamentals, getting back to our style of play, um, that starts today. And it starts in the most mundane drills, um, but it's the attention to detail that comes with those drills and putting yourself in game situations mentally, even if it's a, a ton of repetitions of something that you don't want to do. But uh, today's the, the start of that, and we have the right mindset going into it with the group that we have. Uh, Mo said that you guys were obviously chasing experience. You wanted guys who've been there and done it before. But when you do that, you end up with guys in their mid-30s. Does, does age dictate maybe how you handle a pitching staff, or do you have to handle it differently with you know guys in, in their 30s? Uh, no, even though you're in your 30s, each guy's different. Mm -hmm. uh, they bring something different to the table, so am I concerned with the age of our rotation, not necessarily, no. Um, but uh, no, they're not all one and the same. Ali, when, when you start a, what did I do? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna skip both of you guys in a minute. That's yeah. fine. Go ahead. go ahead. When you start a spring <laughs> schedule, um, do you work back from the first kind of opening weeks of a regular season? And how do you look at that? Because you're all's regular season gonna start with fewer off days. It than does. usual yeah so is that a factor already today it, it is a factor i mean you're also trying to plan for your opening games here with a double header right which is unusual in yeah. itself um so you're planning to have enough innings for that but you, you are looking at day one of the regular season that opener and working backwards always yeah and so how does that i mean open it up with eight games in a row eight without an off day yeah eight without an off day and ten with only one yeah and i don't know you can you have an unlimited roster for two of them but um, but you don't have an unlimited travel budget, so you do have to, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to go with it. Would, how do yeah, you there's look different at that? ways we're thinking about it internally um, of how we uh, usually you want guys on a sixth day leading into kind of the, the beginning of the year. So there's different ways we've kind of mapped it out. And um, as we get closer, we'll see where we're at health wise and make a decision. Not only as a, a young manager, obviously it's a fresh start now, but what do you take away from last year? In terms of learning about managing and about yourself as a manager from obviously a season that didn't go as you had hoped? Um, no, it didn't go as, as we would hope. And the reality is uh, it was very difficult. Um, it, I, I mentioned it during winter warm up. It definitely will test your character. And uh, you, you have a lot of time during the off season, uh, longer off season than I would have wanted to reflect on what you want to do differently. But sitting here and talking about it does no good. Uh, the reality is. Um, you're going to have to show it. So we'll go out there. I've 
rather not talk about it. Uh, we're just going to go out there and, and show what we're capable of doing, and that starts today. Looking oh. looking forward to the season. Would be a lot better for you guys if Mason went had a great spring and just eased right into starting shorts yeah. up. What do, yeah. you, what do you what did you see from last year that makes you believe he will be able to do that? No, he's more than capable of doing it. We saw a really good spring out of him. Um, in conversation with him, it's it's not putting too much pressure on himself offensively to try to do more than he needs to. Uh, it's going to be a, a key to him having some success early on with us. But yeah, our hope is that he goes out there and wins the job. Um, it puts us in a in a really good position if that's the case. So uh, I'm excited to see him this spring. He's oh, ready have, for it too. Yeah. How do you have to handle Tommy uh, with you know coming off the surgery? Do you have to ease him in? I know it's going to go in steps and phases. How, how limited is he, you know, at the start? Yeah, we still have a decent amount of time before we open up, so you, you, you do have to kind of make sure you're progressing through that properly. Um, he's limited at the moment. Um, we'll continue to monitor his progress, and as we get closer to breaking camp, we'll see how close he is to taking at bats and feeling comfortable in the box, and we'll go from there. But it's too early to tell at the moment. Oh, yeah. when you look at how you're. I mean, you're going to have six or seven weeks to really put it together. But when you look at how your roster is currently constructed, what yeah. do you think is going to be the most competitive area this spring? Um, there's a couple. I don't even – we want to see Mason do well in spring, but there's some spots in that bullpen that are also up for grabs. Um, so it'll be, it'll be good to see some of these names compete out there um, over the next several weeks. But I would say that that's the spot that uh, when you look at our rotation, if we're healthy – we have a pretty good idea of what that looks like, what our five guys are. But in the pen, there's some there's some open spots there. At that point, Ali, what does a trajectory for spring look like for both Zach and Libby? What do you yeah. need to see for them and sort of where do they fit into that point? Well, yeah, I think those decisions you don't have to make till later. You definitely build them up to be able to throw multiple innings and, and kind of work them as starters. Um, and then as you get closer, you make a decision of where they're gonna where they're gonna provide the most help, uh, whether that's out of the pen or in the rotation or if health is a concern for one of our starters and who slots in there, so yeah. How do you kind of balance the risk of putting a lid on the guy? Like those are both guys who have been really productive for you out of the bullpen, who as minor leaguers were successful starters. Where is the risk between like, okay, this guy's a reliever versus maybe still even at 26, 27, there's more in there. Uh, yeah, it's a really good question and something you have to balance. At the end of the day, you're wanting to win a World Series. And if he can help do that out of the pen, then that's the decision you make. Um, but we've had plenty of success of guys being in the bullpen and then becoming a starter the following year. I don't think that's out of the question with either one of those guys. We were, able to, we were able to see a cool relation or a cool interaction between Sunny Gray and Wilson Contreras yesterday. Yeah. Both have very fiery competitive energies. Can you talk about how important those relationships are going to be moving forward? Because that was just day one. Uh, that's what this camp is about pitchers and catchers getting here early before it gets a little crazier. It's the, the relationship is key. And um, Wilson's done a good job of even, I mean, he lives in Orlando, driving down anytime Michael has had a, a bullpen and just catching him and making sure that that starts even before spring training. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled with what that's lo looking like. But to your point, both of those guys are extremely competitive. Um, it'll be fun to watch the, them do this together. Yeah. In an ideal season, like organizationally big picture, is it? would you want your five starters that you break camp with to make every start, or would you rather mix some of the younger guys in there and get you know, get them accustomed again to starting? And, and no, we got those guys to start. In an ideal world, health aside, they start. Yeah. Oh, well, you, mentioned, you mentioned Michaelis. Uh, he was talking yesterday a little bit about looking back at 22 and 18 and some of the things that worked so well for him then. What sort of things do you feel like you'd like to see him get back to so that last year is just sort of a, a one-off as opposed to a trend or something? Man, that's a somewhat of a loaded question because there's a lot of ways to dissect it. Um, I will say if you look at the distribution of just ball and play, it was different and it hurt him. Um, hmm. So th there's a couple different ways to look at this. Um, I can elaborate quite a bit later, but it's... He's very aware of what he needs to do in order from a pitch standpoint. Um, but you have to take into account once the ball was in play, what, what took place as well. Um, once you kind of filter that out, it's not as bad as you would think. Yeah. yeah. Tommy, was Tommy's situation being relatively uncertain? Right now? Was Tommy's situation being uncertain? Who do you envision besides Mason and Dylan Carlson as kind of stepping up and taking some of that when we get closer to games, some of that action? 
Yeah, um, Tommy's going to be limited to your point. Mason, we're going to see a decent amount of him at short. And then there's a com combination of guys that can fill in center. Obviously, you got Carlson. You want to see Burleson out there from time to time. Um, I'd like to see Donovan early on in camp just at one position, then bounce around based on his limitations of throwing. Um, so you, see, you can see some time over at short, you can see some time over at third, and then at second as well. But uh, there's a combination of guys that could bounce around based on um, Tommy not being ready. What are Donnie's limitations right now? Uh, he's throwing, he's doing well, but I, once we start games, I'd like to not push it and bounce him around too much. I'd like him to just play one position, get used to it, and then slowly progress him to, to do other things. So he's relatively all clear, it's just a matter of being cautious then? Uh, once we start games, okay. it'll be a matter of just being cautious. Yeah. What position is that? Is it second base? I'd like to start at second. Yeah. yeah. And then make our way from there. Is there a lot of playing time for Victor? In summer? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because of the way this is going to play. No doubt about it. Yeah. Keenan Middleton was a guy you signed just a couple of weeks ago. What have you learned about him? Have you been able to talk? What's his personality like? He's awesome. Um, I actually had him over the house after he signed and, and was able to spend some time with him. And he's a uh, He's got some fire to him, man. Mm -hmm. he, he's uh, he's going to fit well with what we have going on here. Um, he adds a certain edge to that bullpen that I'm looking forward to. Um, he's one that likes being held accountable, but also um, part of his personality is holding others accountable. Mm -hmm. And he wants to win. Uh, he likes having structure. And um, I think he's going to fit in really well. But my time with him back in St. Louis was awesome. Really do, you, was. do you feel like you have multiple options late in games now? You do. Yeah, yeah I think I think when you look at Helsley and JoJo and uh, Andrew um, Middleton, I mean, you, you go down that list. It's you have some some real arms that could shorten the game. So mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing it. Well, well you, you look, mentioned the the edge with Middleton. Obviously, there's a lot of things that go into whether or not a deal with a free agent comes to fruition. But do you get the sense that that sort of edge that he can personify and some of your other guys that you signed personify, uh, was that something you guys were chasing this offseason to, to kind of infuse into this clubhouse? Yeah, I think rather than just going off after a specific style of pitcher, you're going after specific names and what they bring outside of their pitches they throw and kind of their performance, uh, but what they bring from a personality standpoint. Um, and I think we were very intentional about that with our rotation and some of the guys that we ended up acquiring for the bullpen. So, yes. You, you opened up by talking about the, the, the notion of the guys wanting to be here. Sure. In your conversations with free agents, knowing to the extent that you were like involved with those, is that something you waited to hear from them or you asked them? Um, no, it's a combination, like, those deals got done pretty quick for a reason. Okay. I mean, we knew who we wanted and why we wanted them. Okay. And uh, there's a reason we were able to wrap up those three pretty pretty early on in the, in the off season. It, it was clear what they were wanting and what we were wanting, and it matched, and thankfully they're here in camp, so. So, but even like Middleton, like, I know we talk a lot about the starters you added, but sure. just the description you gave of Middleton, it sounded like, he, he expressed at least part of that, or at least expressed what he wanted, and you said, well, we got that here. Yeah, and when you start to think through um, what else you want to add to the bullpen okay. outside of firepower, um, he spent a little bit of time with Lance, so we, were, we had a really good idea of what he brings to the table from a personality standpoint, and it fit okay. our description of what we were looking for. Um, so that's where, I see. yeah. We, um, Jeff asked about Zach and Olivia mm -hmm. doing multiple innings. Anybody else will like Palante do multiple innings to start here, or are there other guys Not like in the that? Same sense of, like building up to be a starter, no. Okay. Are there other guys that you just or is out of the list that you're traditional? correct? Okay. Yeah. You well, those are the two that yeah, I worth mentioning. But I've wondered yeah. about Palante because you'll understand. need innings from. Yeah, I get it, but okay. not to that but same not degree. To that same. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Talk about the intentional things that have been done in the off season. Are you able to give an illustration of what right now you're seeing as a result of that deliberateness in the off season the communication? Yeah, you just have guys that care about one another, and that's a big deal when you're trying to be a team and, and hit camp running. Um, they're going to be intentional about coming together and doing the little things well, and uh, I think we're in a really good spot to do both. Yeah. Well, well Herrera had a uh, pretty strong showing uh, this winter. What is sort of the benefit of that, do you feel like, for you guys, for him, and also just, you know,
getting started a little bit earlier and getting into camp, you know, having already played a lot. Just the continuing the experience for him is, is always good, especially in di on different stages, and that's one that was a good one for him. Um, there's a lot on the line, and he can feel that. So the more games like that that he can play, the better. But he's continuing to just slow it down because of it. Um, the game is slower to him defensively, the game calling. Um, just overall, you can just tell there's just, he's relaxed and quiet back there, and, that, and that's a big deal. So we're continuing to see a, a great deal of maturity out of, out of Herrera and just conversations with him. And you can just tell he's, he's grown up. Um, and he's starting to feel like he belongs here, which is uh, a really good indicator.